My gosh, you boys already know I'm not letting that Ramsey boy come over and play until you clean up your rooms. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and welcome to my favorite show of the year. That's because today we're talking gadgets and gizmos with my BFF from the hit CNET show on YouTube, Bridget Breaks It Down, Bridget Carey. Plus, in our headline segment, we'll talk holiday shopping statistics and statistically how you'll fight overspending this season with the man from the Center for the New Middle Class, Jonathan Walker. That's not all. We'll throw out the Haven Lifeline to a lucky listener and still create a space in your day for my incredible trivia. And now, two guys who have their controllers in their hands and are ready to fire up another podcast, Joe and O-J-J-J-J-G. That was a 30-point open right there. Ching. Exactly how much work do you think really gets done the day before Thanksgiving? Based on what we've done just getting ready here this morning so that people have this ready, almost none. Well, I'm not counting us because we never do any work, but I'm just saying like generally, aren't you already checked out? I was having this discussion last night with Cheryl at dinner talking about that whole week, just mm-hmm. j- just how that whole week is just horrible, like just trying to get through it. And, oh, you try so hard to not be checked out, and it's impossible. So my kids' school figured that out. They have a half a day the Friday before Thanksgiving, all Thanksgiving week, all this week, completely off of school. I totally agree. I think colleges should do that. You know, when my kids were in college, just all the professors. Oh, like how many midterms did you have, like Wednesday, 4 o'clock before Thanksgiving? Oh, did Uh... did somebody actually do that to you? Oh, God, yes. All my professors canceled. Or Monday. Or Monday after Thanksgiving. That's another oh, great yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I had that one before where I had to study the whole weekend. The more frustrating thing, though, is that generally my professors would cancel stuff, but they wait till the last second. So my parents yeah. are trying to arrange, you know, plane trip. And we try to do this with our kids, and it's almost impossible. You know what's much easier, though, dude? Is saving $450 by heading to Magnify Money. Because if you use our link, stackybedjamins.com forward slash magnify money, you tell them that we sent you, as mom says, and it's very nice to tell people exactly who sent you to them. It's like half a plane ticket for Christmas. There it is. Probably can't buy a plane ticket today somewhere. Probably. Go somewhere for Thanksgiving. Well, you could, I suppose. Stacky- you need a black card from American Express. <laughs> and you know where you'll find that? Magnify Money. You'll actually find all the different credit card deals at Magnify Money. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money. Whether it's a better checking account, savings account, student loan refinance, paying less interest to the man, the reward game, whatever. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money. We're also brought to you today by Slack. Thanks to Slack for supporting Stacky Benjamins. Slack is the collaboration hub for work that always makes sure the right people in your team are always in the loop and key information is always at their fingertips Learn more at slack.com. We put together these podcast episodes, largely collaborating over Slack. Good stuff today. Bridget Carey. I'm with Doug, aren't you? One of my favorite episodes every year. I think this is Bridget's fifth year with us on the show. Agreed completely. And if anybody knows technology, it is Bridget Carey. But first, we got some headlines, so let's move. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins headlines. First headline comes to us from financialplanning.com. That's the place where financial nerds hang out. Well, financial pros hang out. Uber, what are financial pros? Uber nerds? Yes, exactly. This is written by Ben Stubbles. Wanted to get your take on this, OG. Social media lifestyle is changing how millennials invest. Millennials' use of social media is helping to drive their investment decisions, according to Fabrizio Campelli, Dutch Bank's global head of wealth management. 
They have a, quote, fear of missing out as they're more networked and exposed through social media to their peers' activity than previous generations. Campelli said Wednesday during a discussion about millennial wealth at the Bloomberg Invest Summit in London. Born between the early 1980s and mid-1990s, millennials' growing focus on investments that align with their personal values and lifestyles is forcing wealth managers to reassess their services. They're set to inherit as much as $30 trillion, according to research firm CB Insights, and their adulthoods align with the post-2000 inception of global social media networks like Facebook and Twitter. We're really looking at this phenomenon because that's what's causing a lot of millennials to explore non-banking partners in some of their financial services support, Campelli said. FOMO, fear missing out, has become a widespread... FOMO. YOLO. Has become a, low and FOMO. become a widespread term to capture anxiety arising from other users' post of interesting events. Social media networks have in turn helped to spawn trading sites such as eToro, which allows users to copy other investors' activity. These trading sites cater to the ability to say, look at how successful this investor was. You can be successful by copying that strategy, Campelli said. FOMO is much more prevalent among millennials rather than Gen X or baby boomers. I don't know if that's a good thing. I mean, why do I want to copy like a terrible idea? <laughs> why do I want to copy somebody else on Twitter's investment strategy that I don't really know who they are? I mean, I get wanting to wear the same shirt. I get wanting to wear the same whatever it might be. But having the same investment strategy, look at how cool I am cuz I invest like Lady Gaga. <laughs> totally see you doing that. A star is born. Joe. <laughs> A star was born and died during that whole two and a half hours of that oh boy. horrendously oh boy. long movie. Tell us how you really feel. The problem with this is that it's not an actual investment strategy because generally speaking, anything that's on the internet, any newsletter, any Twitter account is all based on individual stock purchases. And for individual stock purchases to be ultra successful, what's the one thing that you have to control the price you got in at, right? And so when you see my portfolio is consisted of Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Netflix, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm this uber smart investor. And then they put up their little back testing of I'm up 697,000 million percent. Well, just because you buy it today doesn't mean you're going to get that return because maybe they did buy it back in 2008 and hold it the entire time. They didn't, by the way. But also, if it's based on your goals, the, the portfolio might be completely wrong for what you need your money for. Oh, well, and there's this is just, gosh, this is such trash. Here, we've got a portfolio. I, I do think in one way it's good. The pressure to start investing because people around you are investing, well, I think is good. I didn't have that. I didn't know that anybody was investing. I remember one time just out of college, like I didn't even, I didn't start saving any money, man. And people around me. All of a sudden, they start having this discussion. All of a sudden, I realize I'm the only idiot at the table who's not doing anything. <laughs> Just like my story of walking into the bank with my mom with my paper route money and going, I want the Franklin Mutual Fund. I don't want to put my money in the bank. And my mom looked at me and went, no, no, no. We're not doing any of that fancy investing stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, that says plus 10%. That says plus 2 <laughs> I'll take the 10, thanks. I don't know what you're doing with your money, Ma, but uh, but the, there is a big gap there, and that can help, I guess, from a social pressure standpoint. But I think there's far too much risk on the other side of anxiety about why am I not... I, I distinctly... You've had this happen, Joe. I distinctly remember a client walking in my office one time telling me how he was the world's greatest stock trader because he bought Ford stock when it was under a buck. He goes, well, I took all my money out of my 401k and I bought Ford stock. I, I bet the future on the company. And I said, well, why are you still working today? And he says, what do you mean? I said, well, because if you bought Ford, you, you know, if you bought 200,000 shares of Ford stock when it was 89 cents and today it's worth whatever, $12, you are what Forrest Gump says, a gozillionaire. Oh, well, maybe I didn't buy it all under a dollar. And, you know, you kind of dig through it and you find out <laughs> he didn't buy any of it under a dollar. He bought a lot of it at 10 bucks and it's up to 12. Yeah. And, but it just sounds like a better story to say I bought it at 89 cents. Much better story. And I think that's what happens a lot. People are like, oh, I got Netflix. I got Netflix. 
oh, okay, cool. When did you buy it? That's irrelevant. <laughs> you know, <laughs> on occasion it happens, but this is just far too, far too risky for the average person. And more importantly, it's just not even tied to anything materially Im- impactful to them. It's just some random persons, even might be even a professional, yeah. but some random person or random professionals stock picking prowess, you know. And in our second headline, let's talk about statistics on overspending this holiday season and how to make sure that you don't go past the limits of your wallet. Walking down the stairs right now, it's our good friend Jonathan Walker from the Center for the New Middle Class. How are you, man? Doing well. How are you doing, Joe? Well, I'm glad you're here with me. So you're the man with statistics about holiday spending this year. Tell me how we're going to overspend. Oh, it's so disturbing. (laughs) Because that we will overspend in exactly the ways you think we're going to keep from overspending. For instance, the very first thing that really shocked me was that people who use to chase sales as a way of keeping their spending down sure. are far more likely to overspend or to report overspending what they planned on spending for the holiday. So you're telling me that the strategy that stores have sucked us into about giving us these great deals is really working against us. It's almost like they know what they're doing. (laughs) (laughs) Nearly. It's nearly like that. And I think it makes sense because it's all designed to get you to open your wallet and it's all designed to get you to want to spend and to feel like you're going to miss out if you don't spend. And you know, the, the percentages were fairly significant. So those people who actually shop for sales in order to control their spending, 50% more likely to report that they overspent during the holidays. Wow, that's huge. So how do we fight against that besides avoiding the sales? Well, I wouldn't avoid the sales. You still got to buy, right? Right. I think the, the most effective way to control your spending for the holidays is to have a strict budget. And that's not just a rough plan, but you need to have a limit to what you're going to spend for the holidays and stick to that number. We also found that one of the other disturbing things is if you just plan your holiday, you're still likely to overspend. So you need to do more than just plan. You need to have a strict budget. And what I mean by plan is you can easily say, hey, I'm going to spend $50 on a gift for Tiny Tim. You're going to go all to, to all the trouble to spend that $50, and then you're going to kind of reward yourself by buying a churro in the uh, mall on the way through, and you're going to think, hey, I've been out all day, I need to Diet Coke, and you'll buy a lot of other stuff, and you'll find at the end of the day that you've spent more than you expected, and what you should do is you should just decide, hey, this holiday, I am going to spend X number of dollars, and I've got to make that work. It's funny that a lot of people listening to this, by the way, Jonathan, are thinking to themselves, well, I'm somebody historically that has fantastic credit. I'm a big time consumer. I got plenty of money. In your study, it was actually those people that were the ones, I think, that were more likely to overspend, not the people who had worse credit and maybe really needed to pinch pennies. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the interesting things about this study is that it's almost like there's no respecter of people. Both groups are going to overspend. In terms of sheer dollars, the prime people certainly spent the most money. The The non-prime consumers tended to also have a challenge as well. But, you know, one of the other disturbing things is it's not just sales. It's not just planning. It's also even coupon clipping. People who used coupons to control their spending also were far more likely to overspend during the holidays. But it also, Jonathan, it isn't just about the sales or holiday expenses, the things we've been talking about on Monday show or today's show with these hot deals. It also is the holidays are a really tough time for people to just live through. Like everything financially has to go right for us. Oh, that's absolutely true. I mean, someone needs to remind all of us that our Chevy Malibu does not have the Christmas spirit, right? It's going to break down at the same rate as it would any other time of the year. And if you think about it, the days between Thanksgiving and New Year's is about 10% of the number of days in the entire year, and unexpected expenses are going to pop up. And we found that for those who have unexpected expenses, they are significantly more likely to accumulate debt 
through the holidays. It's the unexpected expenses on top of the normal spend that we end up having to do to make the holidays you know, special for our families is also the thing that puts us at a real risk of making those unexpected expenses difficult for us to overcome. You guys are studying stuff all the time at the uh, Center for the New Middle Class. W- what was the biggest takeaway from this particular study that you did, Jonathan? Well, for me, the biggest takeaway was just how easy it is to think that you're doing the right thing in the way you're trying to control your spending and still have things go wrong easily for you. To me, that's the real key is that while it's good to try to think of ways to control your expenses, what you really need to do is really pay attention to that top line, that overall budget number, so that you don't get yourself caught because it's really easy to whittle away at your spend. A great example is that we found that people reported that only 60% of their holiday spending is on presents. And I think most people think of gifts as being the reason the holidays are expensive. You forget about travel, you forget about decorations, you forget about parties and food. And those things end up being almost half of what you're going to spend during the holidays. Wow. Tell me where people can find out more. You can find out more at our website, newmiddleclass.org. And we've got all sorts of studies there talking about non-prime and prime people and their their behaviors and attitudes and the challenges they face. It's all fascinating stuff. And you know what? If you're walking the dog or you are on your commute, we got you covered. We'll have a link to Jonathan's site and our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. Man, thanks for hanging out with us for a few minutes and happy holiday season. You too, Joe. It's always a pleasure. Big thanks to Jonathan Walker. I've already overspent. <laughs> It's already there. And it's so funny. Mission accomplished. It's so funny. We're about to follow up Jonathan with, uh uh-huh, yeah, all that spending stuff. Hey, Bridget, come on down here and tell us all the stuff that we're going to FOMO over. It's like the um, when you sit down in your computer or in your phone before you go on a trip and you put it into Waze and it says estimated time of arrival 822 p.m. Like I take that as a personal challenge. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch this. I bet I can get it at 811. And so the same thing is true with the holiday spending. You're like, thousand bucks for the year? <laughs> Challenge accepted. I can beat that. I can beat that. Right. Budgeting, though, most powerful method of control over your finances during the holidays. Amen. I was going to say, you know, yeah, and you know what I've done, and, and this has really helped over the last half a decade, is I have a, uh, a little side hustle, I guess you could call it, my, my, my after school activity. And it, you know, it pays a few bucks. And so I just accumulate all that money over the fall. That's the only time that I work for this endeavor. And that's the holiday money. That's, that's it. just what it is. Yeah. And, and so it's a really good, it doesn't, it doesn't affect our cash flow for the family. It doesn't affect our savings plan. That's neat. Boom. Here's the money. And when it's gone, it's gone. I love that. And I think that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is, uh, on social media, hoping to copy somebody else's investing strategy might not be your best solution. Bridget Carey is the host of the new hit YouTube series brought to you by CNET called Bridget Breaks It Down. And I love when she talks about things like virtual reality and augmented reality. She's here today, OG, as she's been the last few years talking to us about all the hotness. And what I love about Bridget is no holds barred, man. She's going to tell you which technologies you might want to jump on, but probably more important, which ones to really watch out for. She's got all that down. Let's say hello to senior editor at CNET, Bridget Carey. And coming down the stairs to the basement, our good friend, I feel like Thanksgiving's around the corner every time she walks down the stairs, Bridget Carey from CNET. How are you? Hey, good to talk to you again, Joe. Thanks. I feel like I spend a lot of time with you in your new-ish show, Bridget Breaks It Down. I don't know. I love that show. Oh, thank you so much. I try to have a little fun with weird tech concepts because honestly, (laughs) too much is happening too fast and you got to have a little fun with trying to understand it all. (laughs) There is so much, which is wild because I think you and I have been doing this for four years and every year we have a different conversation about what's hot. 
So let's just kick it off. Tomorrow is going to be Thanksgiving, Black Friday, right around the corner. What's hot for 2018? I think folks are looking in a couple of different directions. There's some things that stay the same, but different twists. Uh, people are still into the smart speaker category because there's so many years have gone by. They're looking at it. It's getting cheaper. They're thinking, hmm, there's a Google version now. There's an Amazon version now. What do I dive into? And the deals are so tempting. I mean, you have Amazon, of course, doing their Echo Dot. The, you know, this is their small speaker that just kind of looks like a hockey puck, a little bit bigger than that, I guess. They're normally 50 bucks and they're now 25 or 24, really. And then uh, Google's version is also 25. And so this is what gets you in the door. This is what gets everyone going, ooh, a smart speaker. I can change my life. And then you don't have any accessories to go with it. So you're just really playing music on it. But still, there's more tricks you can do. You can call people with an Echo. And I think the new twist, though, for people who are bored by that idea is the fact that there's more video screen versions of this. So Google has one. It's um, it's, it's like a smart speaker with a screen. It's called the Google Home Hub. You kind of like keep it at your countertop in the kitchen. You keep it in your bedroom because there's no camera on it. Thank goodness. So you can keep it in your bedroom. <laughs> and it acts like a smart speaker but also has a screen to let you know uh, quickly. Here's the headlines of the day, the weather of the day. It's kind of like your 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 thing to glance at quickly. And and so is that's a new twist on kind of getting your home a little smarter. You can get it for $100, so you're saving $50 for several retailers like Walmart and Best Buy. In general, I I, I kind of like it, but I feel like you have to be already into the smart home world to really get the most out of something like that. You have to have a couple appliances that you can command with it already. I get the feeling those are so inexpensive because they're really fighting for this market share, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, right now it's like, who's going to win this yeah. race? Um, you know, especially when you got like the dot and the small Google one, like they're going for 25 bucks, you know, that's a stocking stuffer. That's like a gift exchange price range. So people can just quickly, you know, go, Oh yeah. You know, let me just throw that in as a gift. I think if you want to really make it a sweet gift and actually help someone with their smart home ambitions, you got to throw in a smart switch. And by that, I mean, they're really cheap now. I mean, Amazon sells a smart plug for $5. Belkin, it makes one called the Wemo. There's one by the a company called Genie. It's spelled weird, G-E-E-N-I. Uh, that's $15. And some of these switches only work with one brand, but some like the Genie work with Amazon or Google. And what I mean by a smart plug uh, and switch is that uh, it just plugs into your outlet in the wall and then you plug your lamp into that or you plug uh, a heater into that, something really basic. And suddenly you can control it. Hey, Alexa, turn it on or turn on the, the light. Or Also, there's some smart light bulbs out there that are cheaper and bundles. Uh, I've seen um, the Google Home Mini. We were talking about how that's $25. Yeah. Small thing. Lowe's is throwing in a free smart bulb with it so you can control your lights. And by smart bulb, you don't need a whole lamp. You just twist it in the lamp itself. And suddenly you got voice controls and you can set how bright or dim you want it. So, you know, that's the nice package, right? You know, something that gives you that smart home, but with a little extra twist to it. Besides, I can play music now. I've got 87 questions. And, and the first one, you talked about Google. You talked about Amazon. Uh, two other players in that space. The Facebook entry. Oh, no. Not <laughs> just, just, just seems kind of creepy to me, Bridget. Yeah, it is. It is. Because, I mean, they're not really hitting like create they're not doing so well when it comes to having our trust okay and then here comes it's terrible timing and just terrible like why would you want this uh, for anyone who doesn't know it is like a monitor with a camera on it that uh simply does voice chatting on facebook messenger and video chats so great it's like if you don't have facetime already on your iphone or use skype on, on android or whatever it may be whatsapp uh, here you can now chat on on Facebook with a whole other thing you got to put on your desk and has a camera that's watching you. And so I think everyone's like, why can we trust this? You know, uh, yeah. Facebook been through. Uh, Microsoft, obviously, Microsoft stock up. People talking about how well the uh, the Xbox has really done. Well, not just Xbox in general, but the entire Microsoft community. But they have an entry into this now too. I believe partnership with maybe Harman Kardon or somebody uh, with Cortana. Are they going to make any inroads, or is this basically going to be Google Amazon's game? Right now, it's really just Google and Amazon's game. It's Amazon's game when Google's catching up. I would say like 30% of the market is what Google's got right now. But people are trusting Google because they haven't had these big issues that other companies have. And they, 
you know, if you're not a, if you're an Amazon shopper, you end up going with Amazon. Sure. A lot of gadgets go with Amazon, but more gadgets are now going with Google. So you can't go wrong either way. I'd say it depends on what you use every day. I think if you're an Android user, the Google's a no brainer, you know, cause it's already part of that app life you have. I don't think Microsoft has given us anything that's worth, uh, you know, considering for yeah, a gift. Kind of a non-starter. The, uh, and then on the high end there, when you talk about sound and music, Sonos, it seems working really hard to stay relevant. What do you think about Sonos? I think, uh, well, we have a full re- review up if you really want to get dive into this. But uh, I think for people who are looking for something on the high end, it's compatible with, with, with all the services. I mean, it's one of our highest re- reviewed things. So it, with Sonos, it's about having this like great music system in your home and being able to stream all these different things and uh, not worrying about really if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you know? And that's, yeah, yeah. And that's what makes it so kind of seamless. You can even do it throughout different rooms in the house and they kind of sync up. If you have, if you really want to build and get in, and get really complicated, you can do that. You know, it provides that opportunity. The You were talking about light systems and I asked you this question, I think a couple of years ago, you know, when you talk about smart light bulbs and about how ubiquitous those are becoming, but this whole idea like that Philips lighting system, have those really made any inroads or are you seeing that go anywhere? I think it depends on who you ask. If you ask the guy who reviews light bulbs here, it's seen it all the time. <laughs> he always has something new to explain and say about it. But I think for most folks, what you're seeing is, is interesting little quirks that you can add to your home theater. Like imagine having lights in your living room with these bulbs that suddenly go red when the movie you're watching goes red or, right. you know, and, and it kind of gives you, Ooh, it's like, it's like you have a fancy home theater for just putting a light bulb in. So that's the little gimmick fun stuff or like having a party and setting the mood or changing just, just, just mood lighting for reading versus, you know, family time. So I think more folks are willing to try them because they you know there's, there, there's so many options out there. I think one problem that happens often is you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you go, Hey, this is cool. I'm going to buy it. And they go, wait, it's not compatible with, I need a, I need a hub. I need this. I need that. So always read the back and do your homework because you don't want to be stuck having it not be compatible with whatever you like to use. We can't avoid this topic. One of my favorite Black Friday moments every year is the video of people beating the hell out of each other to grab a TV. So we have to ask you about televisions this year. What's going on Black Friday in TV world? I think when it comes to the deals there, these are always going to be no name brands that try to get you in the door and they have two of them. You know, right. <laughs> it's, always, it's always like, oh, wow, it sounds so good. And, you know, there's not enough to go around for those. But... Uh, you're going to find some good deals if you can see something for that's a Roku TV. And by Roku TV, I mean uh, TCL and a couple others. They they make this television where the streaming is built in and it's so and, and the picture quality gets great reviews at CNET. Just the smarts are built in so you don't need an extra little box or you don't need an extra little stick to put in the back. Roku's the best because it works with so many services and it's something that even if you're not into buying more streaming services, it kind of leaves you the option to upgrade later if you ever want that option because it has the smarts built into it. So I think uh, if you go for something that's a Roku TV, like I said, usually built by TCL, you know, um, some of these smaller companies end up having really great picture quality. It's funny when you talk about Roku TV, we actually, a friend of mine and I went to CNET and we were looking at the reviews. He was in the market for a new TV three months ago. And he bought a Roku TV, mostly based on advice that we saw at CNET. And what was, you know what my favorite part of the Roku TV is? It's the remote has a plug-in for headphones, which is incredible. Like if I'm in a room and my spouse doesn't want to hear what's on TV and just wants to do her own thing, I can plug headphones in the back. Like I thought that was, that's probably been around forever, Bridget, and I just noticed it. It has not been around forever. It is a relationship blessing. It is a blessing if you have a baby at home and you want to watch that movie and you're like, just please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. So no, this is, but I would say if you have a Roku at home and you're going, oh man, I don't have that on my remote. They did add updates on their software for some of their new models. So you could kind of wirelessly listen through headphones from your phone, believe it or not, Roku app and the, whatever's playing on your TV uh, as long as you got headphones, you know, from your phone, boom, it's the same thing. So, uh, that, and, so and, great. And that's what I do now because I didn't get the cool remote. Yeah. But that's why well, they make it. So that's amazing. That's fantastic. Let's talk about, you know, you talked about baby. Let's talk about technology for kids. What's great. And what should we stay away from this year? 
one of my things I do is look at how tech is influencing toys. So it's a lot of weird robots uh, that are coming to life in new ways. Uh, <laughs> um, some of them, I guess some things never go out of style. I'll just say it. The robots are more interactive and uh, they're keeping you away from a screen, uh, which is great because please don't play with mom and dad's $1,000 phone. You know, I don't need kids, you know, playing with screens, you know, because you want them to be engaged offline. But all these things also have tons of fart jokes. <laughs> so it's like, wow, the technology is getting amazing. And why is this robot farting? Because it's a kid thing. Oh, right. That's right. OK. So <laughs> that said, um, Mattel. Their most advanced robot they ever invested in is this Velociraptor based off the character Blue from the new Jurassic Park movies. You know how uh, Chris Pratt's character trains the Velociraptor? Yes. Where you get to train them with this remote that feels like it's a video game. You know, press up and click twice and do the move right and then it responds. You can also puppet it around with with moving its mouth and eyes. So I've never seen something so advanced in a robotic. Uh, you could check it out if you want to see more video about it. I have a little too much fun with these things. Uh, <laughs> and if you are looking for a little twist to get uh, kids creative without, you know, you know, hooking them into phones all the time, a Hot Wheels has a new basic Hot Wheels car, just like a normal size little car that costs a dollar like every other Hot Wheels car. But what's different about it is that it holds a GoPro. The GoPro obviously sold separately for much more. So look for your Black Friday deals because normally it's $150. But <laughs> um, you can snap in a GoPro to a Hot Wheels, have it flying down the track and, uh, you know, get to play with video editing there. So I, I really like that. And uh, a lot more STEM toys, STEM being focusing on science and education, technology yeah. learning, and they make it more fun because normally it's really boring stuff, right? Kids don't want to learn. But they made um, this thing by the company Little Bits. It's tied into Marvel Avengers. And you can become one of the Avengers by learning to program all superpowers and it responds to light and sound. And it's for 10-year-olds, but I had fun. So I think it's kind of a neat way to teach kids how to program. I think you're a 10-year-old at heart. <laughs> I'm fairly certain when I watch when I watch Bridget Breaks It Down, I'm like, she's a 10-year-old at heart. Just it, it's clear you love your job. But but you know what? I'm 50 and that Hot Wheels thing sounds awesome to me. Sounds oh, just yeah. No, like, I mean, being able to do uh, trick tracks and, and, and it, it's a little bit... <laughs> We, we like set up a stunt thing in the office and it took a little time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely the coolest GoPro mount, I would say, because it's only a dollar and you can do a lot with it. That is fabulous. Let's go from the excitement of kids toys over back to the house for a second, because, you know, a few years ago, everything was about smart appliances and, you know, even smart washer and dryer. There was a joke I saw the other day about your toaster will, you know, tell you something and your refrigerator will tell you something else. Like oh, yeah, there, there's, there's Amazon in the microwave now. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Like what time your favorite movie's playing, you know, ask your iron that, I don't know, anything fun and exciting in appliance world. You know, some things are gimmicks, but I think that you're seeing a lot more cookware trying to be smarter, but it ends up being way more expensive than it's worth. In the appliance world, everyone has been buzzing over the past two weeks over that microwave that Amazon that has Alexa in it <laughs> because it's 60 bucks. Oh. But that said, I mean, what, you tell it like, hey, Alexa, cook my popcorn. Oh, whoop de do. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't upgrade for it, but I I think it's a good entry level for someone who's like moving into college and needs a microwave, right? Um, uh, and but, I'm too lazy but, to but, press a, three a lot buttons. Of spaghetti is being thrown on the wall just to see what sticks. Yeah. And, and I don't I, I don't think everything is necessarily life changing, but there's a lot of new tricks with lighting that people are trying. I I like the more practical stuff. I like the smart outdoor plug that's 15 bucks and can control my Christmas lights when I'm yeah. away and I don't, or I could do from an app, you know, like, like that's the kind of life bettering type of tech. I like more so than the, Ooh, my lights are cool colors <laughs> now. And it syncs with my dishwasher, you know, speaking of life bettering, let's talk about fitness because every year you've had some great fitness stuff and also fitness stuff. That's been kind of a train wreck. What are we looking at in 2018? I think you can find great deals on even older stuff because not much is changing. Obviously, everyone wants that new Apple Watch. And I like how you can do more tricks with it, like being able to do walkie-talkie, Dick Tracy stuff with yeah. other Apple Watch owners if you all have the new one. But that said, not everyone's splurging, right, for that for that brand new Apple Watch. So you're looking for what's out there for the Fitbits. They are getting better on battery life in the newer models. But if you're looking for Black Friday deals and you see last year's model – 
just go for it because it's it's not changing the game that much this year in a leap of what they can do. It's more just about uh, maybe the newer models have better battery, but you're, you're going to get a great deal if you get the old models. And I think that's something that you always have to do on your homework, right? Because you're going to see these Black Friday ads and they might be selling you like 90% of the time last year's stuff. And sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. But when it comes to fitness trackers, just go ahead and not worry about it. You know, get last year's models because they're perfectly good. Yeah. Fantastic stuff out there for fitness. I absolutely, I don't know. I I got that uh, thing, the V. I'll, I'll say even kids, like Garmin has some fun stuff for kids. So even if you're like, oh, I want my kid maybe to join me in, in this stuff because they want to play with my fitness tracker all the time. Garmin makes these really like cool Marvel and Mickey Mouse ones and, and uh, oh, Star cool. Wars is also part of it. So they kind of gamify it. That's and good. Like, and, and talk about me being a kid. I want I want to be gamified because I don't have motivation to go run. Right. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Make me a superhero with Marvel and and maybe I'll actually get off my butt. I don't know. Well, I like that. I like that better than sitting around with a controller. But while I'm mentioning sitting around with a controller, we have to, I think, end talking about the console wars, mm-hmm. Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo. What's going on there? Switch is the best with everyone wants it. It's going to be good luck finding a deal. It's probably bundles you're going to find because it's always hard to get a great discount on these things. But every once in a while, they go discounted. The Switch is and PlayStation 4 for the gamer who wants uh, some of the best games. I think everyone's kind of leaning that way. Of course, it depends what you have already at home or what you sure. what you personally like. But the Switch was just the biggest hit last year. And it just continues to get more and more buzz because of how different it is. And the games that are on there are are really family friendly and, and fun. And you have that whole Labo system. Are you familiar with, with this whole crafting cardboard Labo system? This is something where you can build your own accessories for the Switch out of cardboard pieces, like steering wheels, pedals, things to control airplanes, and they have special car uh, games that go with it. So that's like a whole crafting activity with a video game. So I think everyone's kind of looking at the Switch that this year is the splurge, you know, gotta have thing. And uh, there's a new Pokemon game that everyone's also kind of going after. So if you see a sale or if you can get that, go grab it. Because I've seen some bundles out there with, for that. Uh, you did a Bridget Breaks It Down with uh, Virtual Reality and I'm wondering uh, what's going on there. Are we going to see this HoloLens anytime soon? <laughs> you could buy it if you wanted to and it had nothing to do with it because right. it's for developers only. Right. You know, are we going to see anytime soon? Uh, no. Uh, honestly, there's there's talk that this year there might be a different version. But it all comes down to the apps, right? Like, what are you going to do on it? What are you going to be able to do? Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, companies who might use it for architecture, being able to see the blueprint right in front of them and walk through it and and schools who can like have an experience. And, th- and that's great. And I've played with it. I've seen them. It's great for that really quick learning moment. But in general, VR, it's more still just a fad. It, it, it so feels like a fad. It's And it's so sad because I remember, what, two years ago when the Oculus being developed, I thought, oh, this is coming. And then it, I think v, I, and I should clarify because I think Oculus has more in it than anything else. And that's VR. But then the HoloLens and what you hear about magically, that's all AR, which is augmented reality. Yeah, right. I think you're seeing the most augmented reality in your phone. Like the iPhone and, and Android phone, they, they, they have great apps where you can have augmented reality games and that's more practical. That gets you in the door. Everyone's already got a phone. Yeah, that's fantastic stuff. If only there were a place, Bridget, where people could find out more about all these cool tech products. I wonder if there is such a place. Well, I think I've heard of a place. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen it. We're going to like bombard you with all the different deals that are going on all weekend long up until Cyber Monday and also advice on what really is a deal and what isn't a deal. Because often you go on Amazon, you see, oh, it's marked off $50. And it's always marked off, you know, maybe $40. It's not that big of a deal. So we have some tips on what you could do, too, just to, just to be aware of what really is worth it and what is just a gimmick. And can you also tell us what's coming up on the show? Well, we're working on, uh, let's see, right now, uh, a little bit of uh, quantum computing and oh, cool. uh, the history of where emojis come from. So stay tuned. I think we're also gearing up for CES. That That is the big tech show every year in January. It's like our Super Bowl. So between those three things, there's plenty of buzz to talk about. I always feel bad for you then because you just get off the holidays, which is fun, but also stressful. And immediately, I think you're on a plane to Vegas. 
Yeah, it's basically like, Happy New Year. Oh, I'm, not, I'm in <laughs> Vegas. Let's talk about robots and right. weird stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not so bad. I'll be hanging out at CNET all weekend long watching as uh, headline after headline comes. And uh, for uh, links to that and also to Bridget Breaks It Down, we'll have all those on our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. Bridget, thanks again for hanging out with us and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Joe. Same to you. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And, you know, Joe's mom is working really hard on Thanksgiving dinner. It's critically important to plan for Thanksgiving, kids. And to model excellence, I've created an amazing Excel spreadsheet to adequately plan my day for maximum turkey intake. Here's how it works. You may want to grab a pen and paper and take notes because it gets complicated. Okay, so I'm going to wake up precisely at 9 a.m., a little earlier than normal, watch 2.5 Thanksgiving Day parades, maybe longer if Hoda's hosting that second one, because, you know, Hoda. <laughs> Avoid breads and hors d'oeuvres. Amateurs get caught in that trap all the time. And then at 1 p.m., seating directly behind OG and Joe's mom, I'm going to stuff myself first with turkey and then with the bean casserole, but not any of that butternut squash. That's just disgusting. Then at 1.43 precisely, I'll settle into the lazy boy and strategically kick the legs up so that at 1.45, it is nap time. Then wake up at 6 p.m., make turkey sandwiches, light on the mayo, and it's off to sleep again until exactly 8.25. And before nine, make some turkey and gravy snacks. Then back to bed for the evening. I know, right? It's like a well-oiled machine. It's completely brilliant. That's tomorrow. But today, let's talk Black Friday deal, shall we? Bridget Carey talked about playing videos and music. And the phonograph played a huge part in bringing music to homes around the world. Who invented the phonograph on today's date in 1877? I'll be back with the answer in just a moment. It's funny, we've spent the whole episode talking about tech toys, and you know what the number one tech toy we used was? It's this little thing called Slack. It has a mobile app for iOS and Android that syncs seamlessly with our Slack that's on our desktops. Slack is very simple, and yet... You wonder why somebody didn't create this before. It's a collaboration hub for work, whatever work you do. With Slack, the right people in your team are kept in the loop and the information that they need is always right at their fingertips. Teamwork on Slack happens in channels and lets you organize conversations and information around projects, offices, and teams. And because everything you need to work is in one place, it's faster and easier to get things done. With Slack, your team's better connected. You can find out more at slack.com. You know, for us here in the basement, when we're working on podcast episodes, we use a couple things. We use process.st, which is just a checklist system to make sure that we check all of the boxes as we're creating our show. So from Doug's open, making sure that's written to this segment right here that you're listening to, organizing our headlines as we find them, when we find stuff. It all goes in there. And then as we're sharing it back and forth, instead of having 15 places to share it, we share it all in one place, and that's Slack. Because Slack interfaces with apps that you already use like Jira, Salesforce, Zendesk, for us, Google Drive as an example, we can also, we use a peer in, which lets us have very quick on the fly meetings with everybody on the team, no matter where they're located. In fact, Slack works with more than a thousand different apps. So instead of having to look through a bunch of different emails for that one follow-up or searching through multiple systems to find what we're working for, very simply, we just use Slack to talk about where we're at in the process. And between that and our process street, those two things are all we need. It's very, very simple. Slack, where work happens, learn more at slack.com. That's slack.com. You know, in a week like this week, when you're doing a bunch of holiday shopping, probably 450 extra bucks in your pocket sounds good, doesn't it? Well, Magnify Money is the place to go for more of those tools that you use every single day. And I bet you used it a lot this week, whether it's a better savings account. If your savings account's not earning 2%, their savings account's paying at least 2.5%. You think, oh, what's half a percent? That's not half a percent. That's 25% more than what you're getting right now. So two 
0.5% on the top one. But you know what? When we look at a lot of them, it's 2.26, 2.25. Still big, big interest rate difference between that brick and mortar bank you're using and many of the virtual banks available at Magnify Money. That's not all, though. You can look at CD rates, link checking and savings accounts, fee-free checking accounts, personal loans, refinancing your student loans, Parent PLUS loan refinances. If your ride dies and you have to have one now, auto loans are there, 0% credit cards, low interest credit cards to pay less interest to the man. Or if you pay off your credit cards every month like you should, cashback rewards are also there. Whatever you're using, Magnify Money has it. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money. It's the easy place to compare, ditch, switch, and save. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Duggan. Did I say I was going to sleep from 1.45 until 6 p.m.? Because if I did, that was a huge mistake. I'm sleeping only until 5.52 p.m. Got to change cell J6 in my spreadsheet here. Ooh, God, glad I caught that. Okay, I also have here in uh, cell 2B for today that right now I'm scheduled to deliver your trivia answer. So uh, here was the question. The phonograph, a.k.a. record player, played a huge part in bringing music to homes around the world. Who invented it? Among his many, many inventions, on today's date in 1877, Thomas Edison, or as I called him, Tommy, that dude could party, he created the phonograph. I also have it on good authority. Two days later on Black Friday, 1877, the local superstore discounted it as a doorbuster by 30%, but only between 5 and 6 a.m. when the two per customer. See ya! fairly certain he got that wrong, but wouldn't that be funny if that was the way it worked? (laughs) Yes, it would be. (laughs) I got to tell you all these new technologies, like the augmented reality stuff. I think that's going to be so neat when you can be in one city, let's say I'm working on my car and some mechanic in another city is showing me exactly like what to fix. You know, (laughs) you were talking about that two or three years ago with your son at University of Texas. Yeah, it it just seems to be closer all the time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Thanks again to Bridget for joining us. Hey, OG, let's throw out the Haven Lifeline. We're going to tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency, they put what you value first. Got to be double helpings of pumpkin pie. Just so good. Pumpkin pie is so good. (laughs) Pumpkin pie times two. And pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie and more and more. It's a double pumpkin pie times two. Yeah, basically. So half a pie. You didn't ask what's in my cup. Dude, it's the pumpkin it's, spice. It's the PSL. I got it. It's so Hashtag good. Hashtag PSL. It is so good. I'll be honest. I hate to admit it, but uh, I've actually had a peppermint mocha already. And I had it on a day when it was like 82 degrees outside. <laughs> kind of was like a tool, but but I wanted it. So... What OG want, OG get. Was it good? Oh, yeah, it's good. I don't know. It's like a thousand calories. I know. The peppermint thing just doesn't do it for me, though. The pumpkin. Mm. But I've never had one. Well, for Haven Life, speaking of one, it's your loved ones and your time, the things that we celebrate on Thanksgiving here tomorrow in the U.S. or on Thursday in, in Canada, either one. That's why they've created a modern way to buy quality term life insurance Head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life now for a free quote. Love Haven Life. And every time your own comes on, you just remember that uh, good companies, OG, start from the top. You know, mm-hmm. if the CEO walks the talk, everybody else walks the talk. That's when you know you're working with a good company. Doug would say great companies start at the bottom, but. <laughs> he, well, no, he'd say the top, but he would want us to redefine where the top was. That's yeah. True. Today, because we are so backed up on letters and we don't, we, we're going to grab one off the letter pile, which is actually funny because we'll answer your question on the letter pile. We'll answer it, you know, a month and a half later, but you could be next up on the Haven Lifeline. But for today, let's say hi to Steve. Steve says, hey guys, I'm 30 years old and recently came into some money and I was considering investing it 
in a mortgage after doing some simple math that just doesn't seem like a good way to invest my money with how much interest I'd be paying over a 25-year mortgage. So instead, I want to enter the market, and I have no idea who, what, when, where, and why, and also the how, to be completely honest. So just looking for a little startup advice. Should I use my bank or an online broker or how to diversify and how not to lose all my money? Sorry for the questions. I'm just so green. Could use some advice. Steve. Great job, Steve writing in because uh, we can show you what you do to start. And I think, frankly, all of those questions, whether I should use an online poker, use my bank, that's all for later. I think there's other places to start. Stephen Covey would tell you that the best place to start is with the end in mind. So we have to figure out what the purpose of all this money is for. And is it for something as simple as a house down payment? You know, you said investing in a mortgage. I don't think you really meant that that way, but you probably meant buying a home. Is that on the horizon? Is this for retirement, you know, in 30 years from now? Is this, could this be used to pay down debt? There's a lot of different um, goals that money could have, or you could have with money, I should say. And so that's going to largely depend on where this money ends up. If you have no cash reserve, the best place to quote invest it is in your savings account. So you've got an emergency fund. If you've got an emergency fund set up, but you've got $25,000 of credit card debt, the best return on your investment is going to be to pay off your credit card debt. So we have to build that financial house the right way in the right order. And everybody likes steps seven, eight, nine, and 10, because those are the real fun ones. You know, when do I get to buy Amazon stock? When do I get to day trade, you know, <laughs> currency futures? Like, okay, that's step 11. Never. But those boring things like, what do you mean? I'm supposed to just put this in a saving? And then what? Yeah, let it sit for how long? Ever? Ugh, boring. I want to open a brokerage account. I want to buy stuff. What about index funds? How about how many of those should I get? So you got to build it the right way. But let's assume that all that stuff's done and you're saying, yeah, I got my emergency fund. I don't have any real consumer debt. We're comfortable with my savings plan and investing plan right now. And now I have extra money that I need to invest. What should I look at? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, I would make sure that you've funded both this year and last year's IRA contributions. Those might be Roth IRAs or traditional IRAs, depending on your tax status. If you're married, I would make sure that you could do both of those. This year and last year contributions for Roths, for example, you can do 11000 for last year, 12000 for next year, starting in January, of course, and boom, you just ate up twenty three grand of quote-unquote money that is now all dedicated toward retirement. So that's the type of account. And then the last place that we have to think about is now where do we actually put it? Do I open a brokerage account? Do I put it in a uh, in a, a bank? Should I visit the Schwab office or something like that? And really, that's going to be uniquely personal. There are so many investing tools out there, so everything from you know Vanguard.com to Fidelity has their free funds. Schwab has a investment platform that is robo-ish, right, where you can kind of answer some risk tolerance questionnaires. Tons of those places, Betterment, Wealthfront, all of those are great kind of entry level places from an investment standpoint. What I love, though, about what you're saying is, is that a lot of that angst that people feel about choosing among those OG, I think a lot of those choose, the, you at least narrow the field a lot when you do what you're saying, which is begin with the end in mind. You're like, okay, because only this thing and this thing and this thing actually meet my end goal. I can explore how those work instead of exploring how 50 things work. Like I think, I think that new investors think they have to know everything about everything. Well, if you start with that end in mind, you only need to know about the stuff that meets your goal. That's it. That's all. And so you can, yeah, very, what's, the, what's the purpose of this money? If it's yeah. 30 year money, then you only need to look at investments and investment type accounts that engage in 30 year time horizons. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no point in looking at bank CDs, right? No point looking at bonds. Well, there's never any point of looking at bonds. <laughs> but then it just is is understanding, you know, for a 30-year time frame, it's stocks and real estate. I mean, those are the ones that consistently got you there. Sure, there's riskier asset classes than that, but those two asset classes with the 30-year time horizon. Venture capital, the, private placements, right. hedge funds. Right. These are all great places to lose money. I mean, put your money. Art. Art, yes. Yeah, commodities. Yeah, uh, collectibles, beanie babies, futures, futures contracts. Mm, yeah. Those are fun. Yeah, yeah. Don't do any of those, uh, stocks and real estate historically have gotten you there and they both have great upsides and huge downsides. Both of them do. And that's, that's all that you've got to look at really. And then yep. begin and then, with the end in mind and then that'll 
narrow down your your pool of things to consider. Yeah, that's great advice. Thanks for the question, Steve. If you've got a question for the show, uh, the Haven Lifeline, wide open, stackybenjamins.com forward slash forward slash nothing. It's just stackybenjamins.com. And at the top of the site, it's we made it that easy. At the top of the site, just questions for the show. Click that link and uh, stackybenjamins.com forward slash voicemail. If you want to go just right to the Haven Lifeline and leave something there and you'll get some of our swag, the greatest money show on earth t-shirt. That's going to do it for today. If you want to get on OG's mailing list because you need financial help in 2019. Did I say mailing list? I'm at waiting list for 2019. Oh yeah, we totally snail mail stuff to people. <laughs> Stackingbenjamins.com <laughs> forward slash OG. Just the letters O and the letter G will take you to the waiting list. And I was going to add real quick. We've also got those shirts that we need to get rid of for charity. Some left. A lot are sold limited sizes from the tour. So they're special edition, limited edition, never going to be released again edition. I mean, you might even buy one that doesn't fit just to put it in one of those frames. Like, you know, when you get a Troy Aikman jersey at an auction or something, and it's like in a glass case and it's signed by Troy Aikman. I'm happy to have you sign for me if what? someone wants a collectible with autographs. We'll we have, will not put it in a case for you. but We'll have Richie and Mom sign them all. Yeah, with not washable markers. So somebody will just think that you have a shirt that's got a smudge on it. (laughs) But in any event, a few bucks, I can't remember what they're priced at, $20 or something like that. We don't make any money on it. $20 Uh, plus shipping. We got to charge you a little bit for shipping. And all of the proceeds are going to go to the TIAA difference makers from the live shows we had in October. So I would really like to get rid of these. More specifically, I'd like to donate the money to the charity. So please, stankingbenjamins.com slash tour shirts, plural. If you just go to stackingbenjamins.com slash shirts, you just get the regular, you know, non-limited edition. Everybody and their brother has those. You got to add the word tour there first. So stackingbenjamins.com slash tour shirts, please. And yes, I am hawking t-shirts today. That's what I've come to on the day before Thanksgiving. Day before Thanksgiving is a good day to hawk those because I I love those difference makers. Good stuff. Also, by the way, uh, you've got a big fan here. Mom has this on the fridge over the Thanksgiving holiday, five stars, and says, if you want to learn anything, follow G on Twitter at not the fake OG. How about that? Ooh. Okay. Somebody help him build your Twitter game. This is Laces Out Dan says, you want, really want to learn anything? Just follow him. So thanks for that. And sure. uh, does, I don't know that I put anything inspirational on Twitter, but does, okay. does mom follow you on, on Twitter? No, no, she couldn't even be bothered to go to the. Isn't that great? Live shows. It was so yeah. funny. <laughs> she had a painter coming. Yeah. Well. Busy, busy, busy. That, and as people heard, we tried to sneak out and yeah, that didn't really work out. That's going to do it for today. Thanks again. Well, you know what? Doug's going to thank everybody, but thanks to all of you. Big uh, Thanksgiving day in the United States tomorrow, AKA Thursday, everywhere else, but happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, OG. I'm going to be in a food coma with Doug by one thirty tomorrow. Agreed. All right, Doug, uh, what should we have learned on today's show? So what did we learn today? First, take some advice from Bridget Carey and watch out for some deals that aren't so great on Black Friday. Maybe it's better to wait a year and make sure the technology is stable than score the new thing right away. Hold off on your FOMO and your wallet may thank you. Second, thinking about how you're going to make it through this holiday season? Take some advice from Jonathan Walker and start with your budget and work backwards. You don't have to be an overspending statistic this holiday season. And you'll start off 2019 with a bang if you don't have a credit card hangover at the end of it. But the big lesson? Make sure you always, always talk to Joe's mom about your phonograph trivia. That woman loves music so much that I now have a dance partner down at the pool hall after our Wednesday sizzler outing. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. (laughs) Special thanks to Bridget Carey for joining us. You'll find her at CNET, reviewing the latest and greatest technologies. You'll also find her on the CNET show on YouTube. Bridget breaks it down. Thanks also to Jonathan Walker from the Center for a New Middle Class for joining us. You'll find Jonathan, his team, and all of their research at elevate.com slash CNMC. 
This show was created by Joe Saul Cihai, produced by Richie Rutter Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at, at @sbenjaminscast or on our Facebook page. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I do not like computer jokes. Not one bit. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. And on this day before Thanksgiving in the USA, a big thank you for hanging out with us again today. What does your family do on Thanksgiving? Anything special or is it football and parades? My wife cooks the most amazing meal for everybody. And she is just a specifically accurate planner. So she is totally like the, okay, I will get up at 717. It will take me 32 seconds to put on my bathrobe and walk to the kitchen and turn the oven on. Whereupon it will take 97 minutes for the oven to reach the desired time. You know, I mean, she's got it all laid out. She's like, like that. Doug with the spreadsheet. Yeah, except she's good at it. And then, um, <laughs> with that uh, little caveat. Yeah. So, uh, so she does all that stuff. You know, we get all this stuff done ahead of time. It kind of a little bit depends on the weather. We've had really, really nice Thanksgiving days here where we've got the doors open kind of eating alfresco type type of deal we've also had 39 and pouring rain <laughs> and those days are yeah i'm not going anywhere like those are pajama days just kind of hanging out but uh, usually eat around two football's on tv uh i don't really like the parades that much so i'll put them on the kids kind of like them but eating alfresco with your kids in the room <laughs> i don't think that means what you think it means oh okay I was getting a little uncomfortable yeah. there. That wasn't going to be good. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, if it's nice out, we'll go outside and do the, the I will catch or something, but I will be, we finally have uh, possession of the new basement and tomorrow I will be setting up the basement for you and I to record. Hey, speaking of, um, I talked to American airlines. They are not interested in a discount despite the fact that we told them we would buy 150 airline tickets. <laughs> Three a week for the next 50 weeks. <laughs> that is so them. That's so American yeah. Airlines. Whatever. They're like, sir, you would qualify as executive platinum double awesomeness, but no discount. But so, oh well. Sorry. But think about all the movies you could watch for the, for the, oh, uh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. I'll be, I'll be done with the American selection by February. <laughs> and like, you'll be done in like four days. Like, there's 50 <laughs> movies on there and four that actually look decent. I've seen them all. It doesn't matter whether they're not they're decent. They've all been running while I've been on an airplane. 85,000 miles this year, something like that. So how far up the ladder does that get you? Second tier from the top. Yeah. Well, third, I guess, technically, because American has a unwritten level called concierge key, which is it's about spending more than it is about, you know, miles. Yeah. Allegedly, it's somewhere in the $50,000 spent on airfare travel in a year. <laughs> level <laughs> just a yeah. boatload of money I but agree. anyway then there's executive platinum so for some reason and i think it's just the way that we split up our credit card based rewards cheryl qualified for gold this year and i was just south of it and it was funny because i was reading something on the points guy website about hey should you pay the money now that they're all coming out with hey if you give me three hundred dollars you okay. can actually be gold and he's like no way 
No way in a million years. Not a, it, would, it would be better just to go fly to like Dallas and back real quick. You don't, but you don't even really get anything. Like when I looked at what it, what I would get for gold versus the perks I get just with my American Airlines card, I, it's yeah. it's no di- wow. I get I get priority boarding. I already get that. I yeah. I I get uh, a free check bag. I already get that. Get that. Yeah. There's there's nothing that I get. So yeah. Well, I'm experimenting with it because I've never had this many airline miles in a year, you know, or flown this much in a year. So I'll be interested to see next year uh, into 2019, like how that affects like upgrades and that sort of thing. That's what I was going to ask you. Have you been automatically upgraded yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have already? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But not, not on like normal flights. So what I mean by that is like Monday at 8 a.m. flight, ain't nobody getting upgraded. Saturday, 10 a.m., going to some middle of nowhere place. I got upgraded two days ahead of time. Wow. So it just depends on like the time. And but that, And that's automatic, right, too? You don't even apply for it. Well, you kind of do when you buy the ticket. You know, so you buy the ticket and then it says, do you want to be on the upgrade list? And you check the box that says yes. Gotcha. But I'm. this is the highest tier I've been. I just qualified for it recently. So I've never, I haven't flown yet with the new higher tier. Yeah. So I don't know how that affects it, but, uh, you know, whatever. I got in a real big contest with Marriott over all of our tour dates and stays. That was amazing. So, yeah, it was really cool. They, uh, no, no, so, no, no, well, no. No, I mean, it was amazing that they'd fight you on on that stuff. Oh, like, did I oh. tell you about what happened when we were in Detroit? Yes, you did. <laughs> that was comical. Yeah, but sure. You know, so we're staying in Detroit at Marriott. I put all the reservations under under my name. I, I was making all the reservations, so the hell with it, right? And so Richie comes in and gets checked in, and the uh, woman at the front says, uh, would you like your points as a gift, or would you like a breakfast coupon as a gift? And I said, I'll take the points. And from the back room, like like behind the curtain, here comes somebody running out going, no, 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 no. You cannot have the platinum amenity points if you already have a room here tonight. And I'm like, I bought four rooms for the night. Uh, get my points, yo. You know, and she's like, she's like, no, you only get that gift in the actual room you're staying in, not any other rooms, even if you paid for them. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just looking at her going, all right, we're here for four days. Each room is $200 a night. We've got four rooms. I'm fixing to spend $4,000 at the hotel. And you're going to argue with me about 1,000 Marriott points, which, by the way, doesn't get you crap. You need like 20,000 to get a room, right? So it's not like it's like some sort of magical, like huge bonus. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> but I figured out that the uh, the Marriott people did tell me that I do not get credit for the nights. I just get the points, which kind of sucks. Uh, so you got credit so, for one night because you stayed there. I got credit for the nights of the room that I stayed in, but I didn't get credit for your nights or Richie's nights or Doug's nights. But I got credited for all y'all's points. Yes. You used to use the phrase all y'all. Yeah, and I said fixing to a little bit earlier ago. I, that, that one went past me, which means How about I've, might could? Have you ever heard that one? I might could do that. <laughs> my wife looked at me and said, what? What did you just say? I said might could. My head explodes on some of these. <laughs> it just totally explodes. Go back to Michigan. I this can't. Is, it's like what they say about, I, I mean, I wasn't born here, but I got here as soon as I could. My kids have even asked. Dad, am I officially a Texan yet? <laughs> am I officially? <laughs> because my, I've almost lived here half my life. I'm like, yeah. When will you be? I'm like, you know, when I'm 70. I got to so. tell you, my uh, going back to Michigan, I used to think I'm like, oh, yeah. No, Michigan has that center of the country accent. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, they don't. No, not at all. Some people do. Yeah. It's like the LL Cool J song. Go and back to Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. Go and back to Michigan. I don't think no. that's the song. That's not what he said. No, maybe, maybe not. 